So, I'm out here in Chicago today. Ooh, airplane. I'm out here in Chicago today. I got sent out here on an overnight with the airlines. And I'm in this really cool room and I thought, man, there's not much to do around here today. I might as well make a review video. So today we're reviewing my iPad Pro 10.5 inch with my Apple Pencil. So first things first, I used to love iPads. Uh, I still do, but I first started getting them when I got into aviation because there was a lot of apps related with like sectional charts and maps and weather and all that. And it was really useful, but the airlines use the Microsoft Surface, or at least mine does. So we don't really get to use that anymore, which is unfortunate because the Surface just doesn't even compare to this thing. I'm sorry, all you Microsoft fans. So anyways, I, I kind of started getting rid of my iPads because I didn't really have a huge need for them other than just reading. So I had an iPad mini before this, then I would use that for reading on commutes or when I was bored. And it was really nice. Uh, it was really nice to read and just kind of consume media with it. But I didn't really find that I had a need for the bigger iPad when, I, when they first came out. But I decided I'd give it a shot because my drones that I use, I would mount my iPad mini on it and the screen was just kind of small and it wasn't very bright. Apple advertised a brighter screen. This is actually the brightest iPad screen that's out on the market. Uh, so I thought maybe I'll give it a shot and see if I can get it to work better. And man, does it work better. There's an anti-glare coating on this thing. It works really well in direct sunlight. It gets really bright on the screen and the battery life is still incredible. I mean, what do they advertise, like 10 hours on this thing? You can easily get that. I mean, I've been running with it all day today and I'm 57% right now. So it's just incredible. This is the first iPad that supports HDR, high dynamic range. So Apple's just starting to come out with all these new videos in 4K since they've just started releasing the 4K Apple TV, and they've been upgrading a lot of their videos to HDR. Now what that means is that your blacks are darker and your colors are more vibrant. It's just a better dynamic range. Everything on the spectrum is just kind of increased. Not a lot of tablets support that. Not a lot of screens right now support that. So it's really cool that Apple can build this into this screen. HDR just really makes everything look incredible. This iPad has four speakers, two on each side, and man, they are incredible. For an iPad, this thing gets loud, the bases are heavy, uh, it doesn't sound hollowy like some of the other iPads or even iPhones sound. It's just a really, I mean, the speakers get loud. It's a good speaker. It's comparable, honestly, to the MacBook Pro. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, these iPads also have a new feature to where the sensor, the accelerometer, can tell what orientation it's in, so it kind of prioritizes those speakers, right? So if it's in this orientation, if you're watching something in this orientation, these two speakers are the priority ones, and these ones aren't as important. If you tilt it up, then the top two might be the priorities. I'm not really sure how they define that, but it's a nice feature. Now, a lot of this stuff with this tablet really became powerful for the everyday user with iOS 11. Now, iOS 11 introduced a lot of cool new features like the dock. So down here, you've got an actual dock uh, like you do on a MacBook. If you swipe up, you can see you go into multitasking and you can jump into all your different apps right there. Uh, there's split screen as well, so if you're in an app and you want to go split screen, you can toss your app on the side there. Or if you pull it down from the top, it'll actually split it into two screens. And then you can swipe it over and choose how much of the screen you want the app to take up, which is really incredible. So while you've got your two apps split up, you can even grab a third app and pull it up on the side, and it'll pull it up into that side view app. So you can use this and then just wipe it away, and when you want it back, you just swipe on from the edge. Now, with all of this multitasking, it's made this iPad a powerhouse as far as getting a lot of stuff accomplished that isn't very power intensive or requires specialty apps. But there still, I mean, this still isn't a laptop replacement for a lot of people. But the big reason I decided to get this iPad this time around was so I could do some video editing on the go. And it works really well for that, but there's still limitations. I use iMovie on this thing because it was free and I'm familiar with it. And the biggest reason I use it is because I can export to Final Cut Pro, uh, which is where I do all of my color grading and adding the different logos and stuff like that. But this iPad is not that great for video editing if you're doing a serious project. I know there's apps out there like uh, LumiFX that might be better, but I haven't learned how to use it. And the big reason is that I can't export to Final Cut, which is where I add the little thing in the corner when the video starts and the title card at the end and all the color correcting and everything. I can't do that in that app. So I use iMovie and then export to Final Cut and then finish everything up there. But it's really nice on the go. I can edit while I'm in the back of an airplane flying to different locations. I can 
you know, it's just really portable and easy to use. The chip inside this iPad, the A11 chip, is very powerful. Apple says that it's even more powerful than most laptop computers, which is really saying something considering where we're at with portable computers these days. Now, I don't think they're comparing it to the MacBook Pro. I think they're more talking about the MacBook. Uh, which is still a great computer but it's the more portable one and definitely I think it's on par or more powerful than that computer. I used to have one I upgraded when the touch bar came out. The pencil charges through lightning on the bottom. All you do to charge this thing is just plug it in like that and it starts charging. Now in the box it comes with a little dongle that you can just plug it directly into any USB port but it's just as easy to do this. I've never ran into a situation to where I ran out of battery on the pencil but it's got fast charging. I believe 30 seconds in the tablet will give you a couple hours of usage so I mean really you're never gonna have a situation where you run out of pencil battery and you're just hosed you know. It's always pretty easy to get this thing charged back up. Now this, this pencil isn't required to use with the iPad Pro, but it definitely makes it a more powerful machine. I got the pencil partly because I enjoy drawing in my spare time, so I use a lot of drawing apps on here. But I also got it because I can use it as a precision editor when I'm doing my video editing or photo editing on this thing. And it really makes a big difference. I mean, your finger is pretty clunky and I've got really fat fingers from rock climbing. So getting precise with my finger is hard, but with this thing it's so precise on that tip that you can just dial right into what you want and get right to work. The other really cool feature with it is if you've got uh, your lock screen up, you can double tap with your pencil and it'll open notes right away and you can just start scribbling and do whatever you want. Now with iOS 11 they've got a new feature where your notes will get transcribed automatically and it'll recognize your text so you can actually go into the search function on the iPad and search for the text that you hand wrote and it'll bring that note up. So if you're just really quick scribbling something in because you need to get something done quick. It's just right there and easy to find. Now for a majority of people out there, this is just gonna be a media consumption device and I don't blame them at all for it. I mean, this screen is incredible. I think it's a great size. I used to have the smaller 9.7 inch iPads and then I switched to the iPad mini and both of those were good too. They're definitely great machines, especially if you're on a budget. But if you can afford this thing, I mean, the high dynamic range with this screen is fantastic. The color representation is great. It's just a great screen all around. But another cool item that I bought with it is the smart cover. I've had a smart cover on every iPad I've had. It's co coated in microfiber, so it kind of cleans the screen as you close it. Uh, there's a little bit of play there, so it kind of wipes it as well as you're using it. So it really helps with the fingerprint smudges, and I just like having this screen. I mean, look at this. When you pop it on, the screen comes on, and you shut it, and the screen goes off. It's really quick, really responsive, so you can just open it right away, double tap on your pencil and be right into your notes. It also feels very good. I went with the synthetic cover, not the leather one, just because of price. The leather, the only difference is that it's a more premium product, so it just feels like leather, but uh, this just kind of fits my lifestyle and my just general style better than the leather does, so, and the price is way better. And of course, you gotta have the four more sticker. Subscribe below if you haven't yet. There's a camera in the back too. This camera is the same camera that's on the iPhone 7. And it's got a flash this year as well, so you can turn the flash on in Control Center. Use it as a flashlight, which is pretty nice. Please don't use the camera out in public. I mean, if you're doing something small, I think the big reason that you'd need this is that in iOS 11, there's a new document scanning feature to where you can literally just point the camera at a document, scan it, sign the document with your pencil, and send it off to whatever you need. Other than that, don't use this for photography, please. I mean, you can, theoretically, if this is all you've got, go for it, but don't be one of those guys that's holding your iPad up. Uh, I've been to a bunch of concerts and stuff lately where people doing that. It's ridiculous. Just, just use your phone or your camera. Don't use your iPad. Don't be that guy. I just, I really like this iPad. It's very nice. The, the screen is fantastic. The colors are great. The speakers are great. I wouldn't count it as a laptop replacement just because of the issues we talked about already. If you're using any pro type apps, it's not necessarily the best. But the thing is, there's so many apps with this now that you can send your stuff to the pro apps on your laptop. Sorry, there's so many cool planes falling over. It's cool. If you're in the Adobe suite, they've got Lightroom, they've got uh, a Photoshop Lite type app. Uh, all of it goes to your Adobe Cloud, uh, Creative Cloud, and you can pull it right off of there and just jump right back in where you were uh, editing before on this thing and just really get into the nitty gritty with everything. So, I mean, this iPad can be a good replacement, but I don't think you can go just the iPad is the problem. Uh, just depends on what you need it for, but man, I, 
I can honestly say I really like this thing. Man, I wanna see if I can get a plane shot over here. Check this out. So this hotel is right, like literally right on the approach into O'Hare Airport in Chicago, which is the busiest airport in the country besides maybe Atlanta. I'm not sure about the stats on that, but it's insane. So there's planes constantly coming in. So check this out. They come in like literally right there. Anyways, in conclusion, yeah, I highly recommend this iPad. I really enjoyed having the pencil as well. Uh, it's up to you what kind of accessories you get with it if you decide to go with it. This thing is a powerhouse. Be aware that you may not be able to do a lot of the pro apps that you want to use on this thing, but as a media consumption device, 10 out of 10 for sure. If there's like a laptop replacement, definitely be cautious and make sure that you've got the apps and stuff you need that you use personally before you go jump in the gun on this thing because it can get expensive, especially if you start buying the accessories. But uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed having it. And uh, I'm sorry, that's all I've got today. I'm alone in Chicago. Uh, it's getting dark outside. I'm not going into the city today because I will be in a few days. Uh, watch for the vlog for that. But I'm just gonna edit this, go down to the gym, work out, and be done. Very cool stuff the next few days because I'm going to meet up with a friend tomorrow in Minneapolis. So if you haven't yet, again, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this. I really appreciate it. We're starting to see a little bit of growth in the channel and it's, it's fun to see. It's very cool. It's very rewarding. So I keep staring at these planes. I'm such a nerd. Anyways, that's it for the night. Enjoy it. We'll see you tomorrow.